Hi and welcome back to the kitchen at Gulf Coast State College. My name is not Emily Post. No, this is Chef Paul Ashman coming back to you. What I'd like to do today is demystify table settings. I know it can be daunting to walk into a restaurant and see all kinds of stuff laid out in front of you. You know, why have I got 10 pieces of silverware here? And no, the answer is not in case you drop one on the ground. What we're going to do is we're going to learn what each piece is used for and hopefully make it to where you're a little less stressed out when you walk into a restaurant and see something like this. All right, so if you're ready, let's go. The first thing I'd like you to notice is when you come into a restaurant and sit down and they have a table setting like this, typically they're going to have cloth napkins. Now, you have one of two options with the cloth napkin. Usually, the server or table captain will come around and if it's a really good place, they're going to have two forks in their hand and they're going to pick up an edge of the napkin with the fork and drape it in your lap. If you don't feel comfortable doing that or having somebody do that for you, just take the napkin and you know what, we're going to do a video on napkin folds too because if you just pick up the corner, the napkin will open and you can place it in your lap. There are actually things that we're going to learn about with napkins too, like if you get up to excuse yourself, what you want to do is place the napkin over the back of your chair. And that lets the wait staff know you're coming back. Anytime you set a napkin down on your plate or on the table, that typically is telling the wait staff that you're finished with your meal. All right, so let's move right along and figure out what in the world all this stuff is for. The first thing I'd like you to do is figure out, well, which is mine? I may be sitting at a large table and there's glasses and silverware all over the place. Well, if you'll take your fingers and make some okay signs, you'll notice that I have on one side a B and on my right hand a D. D stands for drink, so the glasses that are on my right side and cups are all mine. B on my left hand stands for bread. So the bread plate to my left is my bread plate. Pretty simple, huh? B and D, all right? So where do we go from here? Typically, the amount of silver laid out is set for the number of courses you're gonna be eating. Usually, you're not going to want to see more than three pieces of silver per side, typically. It just depends on the type of meal you're sitting at. Now, what do we use each piece of silver for? So, we're going to learn that we work from the outside in. So, if the first course is an appetizer, we might have the outside fork by itself for an appetizer or the outside fork and spoon for the appetizer. Once the appetizer is complete, when you're finished with it, you can take your fork and spoon and cross them with the fork turned upside down on your plate. That tells the wait staff that you're done with that course. They're going to remove that course with that silverware. Now, in case you didn't use the spoon for your appetizer or say you didn't eat your appetizer, a good weight staff should still remove both pieces of silverware. And they're going to remove it from the right hand side. Okay? So we're going to set these aside. Next, typically we're going to look at a salad course next. Salad course is going to have two implements used a salad fork. Salad fork and appetizer fork typically will be the same usually three to four times and shorter than a dinner fork and usually a little wider spaced, okay? Usually you're gonna use a fork and possibly the smaller of the two knives that are set out or if they're the same size knife, the outermost knife. If you'll notice the way I have these set, the blades are always faced in. So we're gonna take our salad knife and salad fork and we're going to finish with those and set those aside. Again, if you do not use your knife with your salad, the wait staff should remove it. Okay? 
Typically, the next course is going to be a soup course. If the wait staff is proficient and professional, like we are here and we try to train our students here, uh, dining in the John Holly dining room, trying to honor his memory, you're going to be served a warm soup spoon. And usually the waiter will have a towel, a servette, and it'll be placed, a warm spoon placed on your setting without touching it, okay? We polish the silverware, we don't want to dirty them. And for soup, unless it's a cold soup, which we might be serving here in the summertime, that soup spoon should be warm. It should never be hot to the touch, but it should be warm. Along with the soup bowl should always be warm. We're trying to do things to maximize the guest experience. And if we put warm soup or hot soup into a cold porcelain bowl, it's going to suck the temperature right out of the soup. So we serve a warm spoon, warm bowl. Finish with that, the wait staff will remove it. Now we're at the intermezzo. And here at the John Holly Dining Room, you're going to be served typically with an evening meal, a sorbet, some kind of a palate cleanser. Those will be served a small um, sorbet or sherbet glass, usually with an ice cold spoon with that, taken away, served together, and then taken away together. Now we're at the main course. We have a couple of choices here. First, we have our dinner fork, long tines, typically four. A three tined fork, you'll sometimes see for a fish course, but four tines, and then a large dinner knife and a spoon. Now, if you're getting a protein that needs it, you might be served, just like you were with the spoon, you might be served a steak knife. And that would always be served to the right side with the blade sharp side pointing in towards the plate. Now, we've got our dinner course. Hopefully, everything has gone fine till now. Bread course is still served at this point. Bread would typically be served until the dinner course, sometimes to the cheese course, which is one course after the main. Your bread plate on the left-hand side with a small knife used, and it's dull, and it's just used for spreading whatever, butter, spread, tapenade, whatever is served with the bread. Anything that might be served with the bread, if it's just for that bread, would be served and placed in front of it by your server. At the end of the main course, everything is removed. So when you're finished with your main course, you can put your silverware on your plate, cross it with your fork upside down, and that lets the wait staff know that you're finished with your main course. We're going to take this away, and we're also going to take away the bread plate. Before we get to dessert, my favorite part, I'd like to talk about all these glasses. The coffee cup is typically served like this, upside down. Some places won't even set out a coffee cup unless the guest requests it. An easy way for you to request coffee service is simply turn the cup over, okay? Just turn the cup over and that tells the wait staff that you like coffee and then you let them know what you'd like with your coffee. The three glasses that I have here in front of me, the first one, the closest to the coffee cup, is a water glass, also an iced tea glass, um, short with a very short stem. Typically these are used, um, again, water, tea, you'll even see sodas sometimes in glasses like these. The next two glasses are wine glasses, and what I want you to see is that they're two different sizes. Classically, almost every wine type that can be served has a glass that's very specific to it. We try to keep a couple of different types of wine glasses, but you can really go crazy with wine glasses. These are crystal, and what I've got is a white glass. Both of these have uh, fairly large bowl sizes. The white bowl size is 12 and a half to 13 ounces. And the red, you'll notice the burgundy glass is a wider bowl, a little bit smaller opening at the top, um, 16 ounces. 
the reason these glasses are so large, and you're not getting a very big pour, four ounces is only going to come up to what we call the hips of this. But the reason is, is so that you can open the wine up. Now, a couple of things I'd like you to know. First off, please don't hold your wine like this. All you're doing is warming up your wine. The reason the long stem is there is to remove any chance for heat migration from your hand to the wine itself. If it's, um, if it's uh, a bourbon or a scotch, that's different. You, you might want to warm that up or a brandy. But for wine, we're serving wine at a special temperature that's set just for that particular wine. So we pour it in a glass like this and then you can leave, set it on the table and you can swirl it. And what it does with a bowl this size, it allows the wine to, well, we call it open up, get some air into it so that all of those scents are able to be uh, captured by your nose. And then you can give it a really good sniff. The red, because there's much more complex um, notes on a red, a little bit bigger glass. All right, so we've got our wines. And, and from there, we've got champagne glasses and port glasses and brandy glasses and martini glasses, every kind of rocks to whatever kind of drink you could imagine. Um, many um, bars, hotels, and restaurants will have huge storage facilities full of nothing but different kinds of glass. A couple things you want to be careful of. If you buy good wine glasses, Treat them well, hand wash them, but if I can make one suggestion, be careful about the torquing of them. These are pretty strong glasses. They're strong glasses. They're made to go through a commercial dishwasher, but glass is a, not a real good structural material. If you torque it, they will snap. So be really careful with that. Take care of your wine glasses. Spots can be gotten off with hot water, a tiny bit of vinegar in the water and polish them and that'll get your spots off the glasses. So now we're down to my favorite part and that's dessert. You have two utensils, the Ultramonts. And if you'll notice, they come right down just the way they should be. Spoon on the right, fork on the left, and hopefully I've taken a little bit of the mystery out of all the different stuff that you're gonna find in a fine dining establishment. So you know what? Go out and eat a wonderful meal. Don't worry about all the silverware. If you use the wrong one, don't worry about it. You're the one paying the bill. They'll bring you another one, all right? So this is Chef Paul saying thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time on The Chef's Corner.